At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. Hey Rattlers, so right now I am on an undisclosed island in New Caledonia. And there's a reason why I'm not going to disclose the name of this island, because right now we're going to go spend the day trying to find one of the most critically endangered lizards in the world. So come with me and let's go see if we can find this guy. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. So what we're looking for out here is one of the most critically endangered lizards in the world, Phoboscinctus bocordi, otherwise known as the terror skink. And it really lives up to its name, terror. This guy is the T-Rex of this environment, exactly the way the T-Rex was king of his environment. This lizard is a meat eater. It preys on little leeches and other little skinks that are on this island and it hunts them down and there is no other animal out here that is the top of the food chain like this particular lizard is. And if you are a little skink or a little lychee, it really is a terror. So today is our last day on the island and we've been looking for this lizard for the two days that we've been on this island. And the chances of us finding this lizard it is critically endangered. We have no idea what its population is on this island. We have no idea how many are left. But before this excursion, there was only one or two known photographs of this lizard. It has only been rediscovered by science since 2002. Before that, it was thought to be completely extinct. And this is its habitat. So it's this kind of herping that is really tough. You know, you're out here in the sun, you get sunburnt, you smell like the Hudson River, but it is all worth it if we find and I can film this very critically endangered lizard. The more I talk about it, the more I'm really worried we might not find it because I don't think we're ever gonna be out to this island again. We've got one shot at this. What do you see? A tree? I don't see any trees. Holy crap. Look at that. Right along the edge of the trail. Just this big sinkhole that probably goes down at least 15, 20 feet. Yikes. So the terror skink is a diurnal species. They are out here hunting little leeches and other lizards that are nocturnal during the daytime when those lizards are asleep. They just pick them off one by one in the daytime. Like I said, this lizard has really lived up to its name, terror skink. It's the same thing as a shark patrolling the reefs in the ocean. And when they come up on a fish and those teeth sink into that fish, that fish is a goner. 
so it is with the lizards that the terror skink hunts during the daytime. But in all of our research for the past couple of months before we came on this expedition, we've traced it to this island and we've traced its habitat to these kinds of forests. So we have a very good chance of finding it. And you know, when you're looking for something this rare, if you don't find it, you really can't be that disappointed. But if you do find it, man, I seriously can't think of another point in my life to where I would be so just ecstatic to find this in the wild. But we've been out here for a couple hours now. I don't know. goes down at least 40 or 50 feet. Literally right on the edge of the trail. Damn. Well, Rattlers, this is what it's like looking for a proverbial needle in a haystack. This is what it's like looking for a critically endangered lizard that you have a basic idea of where it is and how to find it. But of course, you're not 100% sure. I'm usually a very optimistic guy, but I can hear part of the group over there and part of the group over there, and I'm taking the middle. But so far, I'm checking every one of these trees. They are all bare naked, but oh, I don't know that we're going to find it, guys. Right, right, right there, right there. There, right there in the crotch of the tree. I got it, I got it, I see it. All right, guys, I'd like to get, I'd like to get it off of there because we got to get photos of this and I'd like to get, of course, video of it. Um, somebody got to climb up that tree. I'm looking at you. Monkey boy. <laughs> <laughs> so this skink is the top predator here on this island in New Caledonia. There's no doubt that this guy is the T-Rex of this island. He fills the same ecological niche as the lions of the Serengeti. He is the top predator, but look at this. Something bit this guy's tail. Could be another Phoba skinktus. Or there could be something else out here that is the top predator that we don't know about. Other skinks have needle-like teeth. This guy has teeth that are flat and serrated and they point backwards, just like a shark. This guy is well equipped to be not only the top predator on this island, but to be a meat eater. He's probably hunting baby lychees as his primary food. And we have no idea how common these are here. We have no idea what the population is here. This guy was thought to be extinct previous to 2002. So we have no idea how common he is. What we do know is that this one exists. And in the last hour of the trip, we found him. Just absolutely incredible. All right, Rattlers, this is one of the crew that I'm out here with. This is Quetzal Dwyer. Hi, how are you? Uh, this is a lizard uh, that I've dreamed about uh, seeing in the flesh my whole life since I learned about its existence from uh, Aaron Bauer in the 90s. It's got a similar morphology to some of the Australian monitors, such as Tristis, uh, which specialize in eating lizards, but it also has a face similar to some of the Central American anguids, which are predators of heavy invertebrates, such as crabs and millipedes. Um, so few have ever been collected. Uh, so this is a real privilege to have this animal in my hands. This is, to me, the most, uh, the rare, by far the rarest lizard I've ever held in my hand. And um, this is something I wanted to see my whole life. And uh, it didn't disappoint. Yeah, I agree. It didn't disappoint, although I, you know, I would be, uh, would be a lot happier if I saw that uh, the island was crawling with them. Right. That's well, the only disappointment. In the in the you know in the what 
48 hours that we have on this island to even find one in the first place. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. No, that's no, incredible. No way. no way. We got very, very lucky. Yes, we did. All right, so we don't have a tape measure, so we're using Quetzal's arm. Okay, so from the tip of the finger to the sheath on my, my knife. That tattoo's just come in handy. It's come in handy a lot. That's why I got it. It's cool. <laughs> Guys, wait a minute. Before we let him go, let's just yeah. take a second and just... Yeah. Like, Enjoy. take a sure. mental snapshot There's of this moment gone. right now and what we have here. All right, good job. Okay, so now we're going to let her go. Yeah, let's send her back to this New is, Caledonia. This is for the record. This is exactly where we found her. and away you go, you treated us well. Thank you. Now she doesn't want to go. Thank you, Cobra Pinkfish. So Rattlers, I cannot begin to describe how just absolutely excited and elated and invigorated I am for finding that lizard out here on these islands in New Caledonia. And to make it even more just absolutely incredible is that was the fifth known specimen ever found in the wild by Western science. Number five. Can you imagine coming to a place like this and seeing a lizard so rare that in the past 120 or so years, only five living specimens have ever been found. Let that sink in for a second. Only five living specimens have ever been found in the past 120 years, and that was one of them. But then I stop and think about the reality of this, that before we came out here, there was only two or three known photographs of this incredibly rare lizard. And now that we've been here, there are tons of photographs, but now I can honestly say that I am the first person in the world to have 4K footage of this lizard. I just, I have no words to describe how I feel right now about that. The first person in the world to film this lizard in the wild in 4K. I just need a moment to process that. Anyway, Rattlers, comment below and tell me what your dream reptile would be to find in the wild. And when you post those photos on social media, use the hashtag Dave's Field Challenge so that I can see those and everybody else can as well. And until the next adventure here in New Caledonia, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.